What's going on? Welcome to another episode of Coffee Break with your host, Sam Iscavel. Don't forget, this is brought to you by The Failed Podcast. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. In the description, you will find a link that will take you, here we go, it will take you straight there. And I appreciate all of your support. I appreciate the comments. I appreciate the messages from some of my close friends who are enjoying this series. Now, we are already a few weeks away from Thanksgiving. Not away, sorry. You know, two weeks past Thanksgiving or so when you watch this. But Thanksgiving, it's obviously a lot of things but for sure it's bringing in a lot of ingredients together to make some delicious food to eat all types of food to eat too much of all types of food but ingredients are important to accomplish the finished product there really if you think about it there's very few things that require one ingredient that you would say is amazing ingredients are necessary to take certain things uh, to the next level. And so today, for today's coffee break, we have basic ingredients for good mental health and is brought to you by the Brain Coach. I know the word mental health is probably overused and not understood. A lot of us throw it out there without really having dived into it, discussed it, or seen others deal with it and seen how they deal with it. So it's very important that um, today's episode, I obviously want all of us to have better mental health. What does that mean? It means I want you to think good. It means I want you to think good about others. It means thinking good about the world, even when everything is the way it is. There will never be a lack of people saying the world's falling apart, the economy is falling apart, this and that are not good, and everything sucks. There will, will never be a shortage of that. But when you have good mental health, you know how to process all that. That doesn't necessarily... Sometimes that affects you, but it doesn't become your reality right now. And when we focus on us, where we are and what we're doing, things really aren't as bad as the things in the world are. They're happening, and this isn't to be insensitive, but they're not happening to us. But even when bad things happen to us, when we are at a healthy mental health state, we can handle those things a little bit better. Not that it's going to be easier, but we can get through it maybe in a shorter time span. And so I hope that today's ingredients for better health, better mental health, really do help you. I'm about to jump into it. And I hope that you're enjoying your cup of coffee. I know that I am. I'm drinking my favorite. It's pecan, Texas pecan. Cheers. Here we go. Number one, learning to feel your feelings. Man, it's so funny because when you hear the word feelings, everyone jumps on it right away and they're like, yeah, I cry. It's feelings have a wider scope of things. Crying is good and important, but if you're doing it just because you're super hyper, hypersensitive, then it's not good. But having, being able to be happy, not only for yourself or for others, or to be uh, angry, right? But where the anger is justified, that's also good. You don't have to suppress it. And so emotions are signals that tell us what we need when things are off balance. They're indicators. And we don't need to let them get to the extreme. And that's whenever... um, bad mental health happens. That's whenever we've missed the signal a few times, right? It's gotten a few degrees deeper, but whenever we can identify these signals, these texts, whatever, however, they're alerts, they're like mental alerts. When you can figure out, sorry about that, when you can figure that out, then you can catch 
<clears throat> you can catch these things early. And that comes with learning to feel your feelings. Are you good at that? Are you good at responding? Maybe this week <clears throat> or after this coffee break. Sorry, my... <clears throat> Uh, I apologize for my throat being hoarse, um, <clears throat> but how do you feel right now, right? Are you a little bit stressed? The answer is, or the question is, why? Are you happy right now? The question is, why? If you're going to identify those things, then in essence, you're hearing the alert, so then fix what's making you stressed, put focus and energy there so that you can reduce that stress, but also what's making you happy. It might require you to show gratitude to someone or even gratitude to yourself, okay? Number two, saying no when you are at capacity. Oh, how beautiful this is. Saying no is very difficult. And yet again, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I love to say no. Oh, I know how to say no. But most of the time, it's people who have been in the game for a long time. They have done a lot of leadership, management, CEO type things. So they've had to learn to say no just in order to keep growing and elevating their career. But in the beginning of any of those climbs in our lives, we don't know how to say no because it's the yeses that move us forward. It's the yeses that get respect. It's the yeses that cause others to say, he's got it. She's got it. They can be counted on. If you ask them, they'll say yes. So it is not an easy thing, but I hear a lot of people say, yeah, oh, I say no all the time. You are at a place of position. You are at a place where you've put in your time and you're able to say no. So here is my take on this little piece of advice. Figure out what your capacity is. Don't do it just because you're lazy, because you don't want to do anything, because you're tired, whatever. Leave that for the birds. But there's several ways to say no, not just one. You can back out of something by explaining what you do have on your plate. You can dive in a little bit deeper on what's expected. And the individual might say, you're right. I need to think it through a little bit more before I hand it off to you. But the ultimate right there is to be able to say no, but never without context, context because whoever's asking you to do something, they're obviously a person of respect. They're probably your boss, manager, or leader, and so you also want to make it a back and forth thing. Now, every now and then, you are going to have to say just no, but those are going to be far and in between, and so I would say get better at saying no, and, and turning stuff down, but make it clear that it's no, but make it in a discussion because usually that someone's a, someone's asking you that you respect. And so I believe that respect is earned and respect is given and maintained. It isn't a, you got my respect and it stays the same the whole time either, but that's for another day. Here we go. Number three. Today, I'm trying to keep track of the numbers better than I have in the past. Doing things that bring you that bring you joy? What are those things? I've talked to several people this past month and I'm realizing that a lot of people have a lot of responsibility on their plates that they forgot. They have forgotten what brings them joy. And I'm not blaming responsibility, family, kids, bills, doing this, doing that, billing, invoicing, you name it. There's probably five or 10 other things that you can name. And so what brings you joy? It's not going to be a lot of things. It's not going to be the ultimate adrenaline type things. But what is, is it reading a book? Is it buying a new pair of shoes? Is it, you know, having a cup of coffee? What is it that brings you joy that kind of takes you away and it kind of helps you shut your brain off for a little bit? Three things make you feel joy and happiness. Figure out what they are. Write those three things down and try to do them every now and then. Most of those things that bring you joy, simple things that bring you joy, you're going to be able to do on a daily basis, okay? It's not like, sorry about that. Figure out what those are. Try to include them in your day. That's that's just a little self-love. And I think that that is important for your mental health, for good mental health. Here we go. Here's the next one. 
moving your body that's pretty self-explanatory movement makes <clears throat> the brain stronger keep it basic i believe and then build on it take a walk right have some dumbbells or some weights by wherever you sit the most do those every now and then obviously there is the extreme version where people go you know all in on their mental health and and, and good for them uh, but the ultimate benefit uh, for extreme, extreme health, it's at the end of the day, it's very uh, hard to maintain and it takes a daily, daily thing. It, it's almost like it needs to be your hobby or your passion or has to be related to your job. So in order not to discourage you is take a walk at least, okay? It is said by many studies that a 30 minute walk in the day covers the minimum amount of physical movement that you need but include walking include something simple move your body move your brain get your blood going that's a basic and i talk a lot about i talk a lot about basic things but sometimes we need to be reminded so this is a friendly reminder move your body Go to, you know, well, I was about to say go to the gym, which is important, but it takes time. It takes money to build the routine. If you don't know, you know, the gym culture, then it might be a little bit difficult. Start right where you're at. If you have a street block around where you at, where you're at, which we all do, just simply start by taking a walk. It is good for you. It is good for me. Here we go. Number one, two, three, four. I think I lost count. Number five, focusing on the basics. And it just says hydration, nutrition, and sleep. Drink water, obviously. Basic, I understand. But, you know, just think about it. Some of us have too much coffee. Some of us have too much soda. And when you find yourself there, just create a balance. You know, everyone will say, uh, many people will say, cut those things out. Cut them out. Yeah, and, and I agree. But there's obviously a reason why these <clears throat> businesses are in business and doing well. There's also things that uh, <clears throat> sound easier than they are. So, Instead of coming on here saying cut, 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 because that takes that, that takes another level of readiness and willingness from an individual, I would just say start including, right? So you can start seeing some of the benefits of drinking water. Uh, the funny part is, is I know someone who never drank water because they drank a lot of coffee. And so in their head, they said, my water, my coffee is made out of water, so I'm getting the amount of water I need daily. And no, just... Simple, basic water will do nutrition. Obviously, how you eat. Uh, there's a lot of medicine and pills out there, you know, vitamin C's and fish oil and all those things. Do your own research, figure out what works best for you, and include that in your daily habits. And obviously, sleep. There's a lot of there's a lot to be said when it comes to sleep. Is it eight hours? Is it six hours? Is it seven hours? If you're in the on the grind, if you're building something, you want no sleep, you want to build. All I'm saying is, is when you're completely exhausted and you're being clumsy and you're not focusing and your productivity level is super low, you're stressed, all of those things, that is the time when you need to go to sleep. Obviously, create a good habit of sleeping, but pay attention to how you're you know, physically moving and doing and thinking and those things start to, to, to decline, my friend, it's probably time for a nap, probably time to go to sleep. And uh, here's the last one. Six, number six, understanding your values and needs and communicate them clearly. So here you go. You need to write these down again. Use your note application on your phone figure out what your values and needs are. And when you write those down, they should apply to everything. How I handle decisions, how I handle work, purchases, how I handle, it. you name it, friends and conflict and family. You'll be able to lean on those values and needs to help you find peace and making, you know, because it might create, like when you, when you respond according to those, people might get offended or be like, well, why do you like that? And you can just tell yourself, Hey, that's just what I believe and it's what I need for myself. And so I will write down right below in the description each topic that I talked about. And thank you so much for tuning in to 
another coffee break with Sam Escobar. Don't forget, this is brought to you by the Feld Podcast. Please subscribe and follow us on Instagram. All of my links will be below. And thank y'all so much for joining me. And enjoy your cup of coffee, and I'll do the same. We'll see you on the next one.